remind you how How big this shit really can get If we just stay consistent All it take is passion Heart And a good team Bigger than any hood we claim It's time that we cement our name It's time the world know who we are It's up to us to finally take charge Bigger than any hood we claim It's time that we cement our name It's time the world know who we are It's up to us to finally take charge Protect my soul and protect my wrists Let me get this money and make the family rich Let me stay in my lane and stay clear of drama And never let me have to stand again in front of your honor Or fall victim to no sucker shit Or ever be a pawn of the government Let me live a life I thought I'd never see Let me truly leave behind a legacy My sons are my greatest prizes And the love I got for my lady I emphasize it All of my success is coming I'm about to get everything that I ever wanted Don't think it's ever been this crystal clear Finally understand why he kept me here It's way bigger than helping myself It's way deeper than flexing on somebody else When my time is up yeah, 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 yeah. You're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. I'm Wilder two six seven. I'm Gilly the King. This Gilly, the, this Gilly the nut. This and Gilly we got the King. The one and only white girl, aka don't call me white girl, but I'm gonna call a white girl because that's what you call a person I, from I, down there. I, no, you I always think we, call. I think we gotta. I think we gotta change it up. Though. Change it up to what? What y'all thinking? BMQ. What's BMQ? <laughs> the Black and Mild Queen. Yeah, that that might be that might be the John. I'm give sticking with Don't Call Me Queen of the Mile. Queen of the Mile. Queen of the Mile. Let's just give a round of applause for me. I'm here. I like that. Queen of the Mile. I like that. Give it up for Queen of the Mile. And all my pale face glory. Hello. Queen of the Mile. <laughs> well, that song you just heard, bringing into a million dollars worth of game, was bigger by Jay Wise, straight out of Baltimore. He's doing his thing. Check him out. Uh, we want to get straight into something, you know, that's real uh, dear to the heart, man. Rest in wait, peace wait, to Nipsey on. Hustle. Wait, wait, hold on. Before we get into that. Let's uh, pay the bills. Let's pay the bills. It's brought this to you by. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game was brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Hmm. Listen, New Amsterdam Vodka, right? There's a vodka with a superb taste and an unparalleled smoothness. Hmm. It's distilled five times. Hmm. It's filtered three times to give you a clean and crisp finish. New Amsterdam vodka is slightly sweet on the palate. Oh, they're still five times. Hold up, cuz. I don't want to cut you off. Mm -hmm. Did that mean they went to jail five times? Kept had to go in them different barrels and get locked in? Something like that. Okay. I just so, you know, he, he, you know, he equivalent to everything with the pen. So, yeah. Go so, ahead. Yeah. But New Amsterdam vodka, right? As you know, it's smooth on the way down. Not on duty, you know. But it's smooth on the way down. And, you know, you can drink it with anything. You drink it on the rocks. You can mix it with juice, soda, you know, and... Is uh, 80 proof. So this shit is stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger in 1987. But you know us. When we get a, a new sponsor, we 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 don't you know really represent the sponsor unless we really into what the sponsor is providing. So let me see what, if this if this is the truth. How you open this? Let me see if, the, if it's distilled five times and all that. And, you know, I used to was locked up for, for six years and all that. Didn't yeah. Bounce back like, oh, okay, let me see. I'm getting gilly loose. That's going to burn your chest. Clean, you clean anything out. Took that like a man. <clears throat> Took that like a man. How was it? Stronger than Arnold Schwarzenegger in 1986. <laughs> I fucked up, not 87, 86. <laughs> yeah, and um. I heard this shit stops the coronavirus as well. We shall New take Amsterdam a pop. Vodka. I think you should try it ASAP. Now, we want to touch on something that's very special to us, man. Rest in peace to Nipsey Hussle. This was his uh, one-year anniversary of his death, man. Uh, mm -hmm. He was made it to us. Oh, let me sh Nipsey. So, you know, we're going to throw that up, represent that. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to, shout out to his boys that's still doing his thing right here. All money in, mm -hmm. no money out. But once again, man, Nipsey, man, you'll yep. always be with us. Now, the thing, the thing about Nipsey that's uh, dear to this podcast is that Gil, uh, you did, you know, a lot of people hit me up asking about the movie that you did with Nip. You see what I'm saying? Caged Animal. 
Right. Could you speak on that? How, could you speak on how did it, not just how it came about, but when you were shooting with Nip, could you speak on the type of person was Nip? You know, what well, type you of know, I met Nip back in, uh, I think it was 2009. You know what I mean? And uh, he wasn't on yet. You know, he was still in the process of, of getting on, you know what I'm saying, and trying to get on. And, um, you know, I met him through through Ving Rhames and, and, and Big U and uh, – we working, you know what I'm saying? Um, what's my man? We ran Steve into Lobel. Steve Lobel. We ran Steve into Lobel. Steve Lobel, aka We Working. We ran into him at the funeral. Right, like, absolutely. He was at the funeral home. And um, you know, me and Nipsey was in a movie together called Caged Animal, where we was brothers, and uh, we didn't know we was brothers, but we was beefing in the streets. And this was a movie that Ving Rhames put both of us in. You know what I mean? And even if you go look at the video on YouTube, even when at a at a very young age, Nipsey Hussle wasn't talking like a regular guy that came up in the gang, and you know he always had a, a, a different type of intelligence about him. You know what I'm saying? And and at an early age, he knew who he was. You know, he knew that yeah, I grew up in these environments and this is what I come from and yeah, I'm 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 neighborhood and you know, I'm a part of a gang cuz that's just the culture that I grew up in and I lived in. But he knew at a young age he wanted different shit. He wanted to be bigger and better and he didn't just want to be known as a gang member that's from the hood and uh, no, he wanted different shit. And I, I commend Nipsey for the shit that he accomplished in the short amount of years that he had on planet Earth. Man, the nigga owned the fat burger, man. You know what I'm saying? He, I remember when he first opened his store. You know what I'm saying? He ain't have a whole lot of product in there. He had some Crenshaw t-shirts in there. You know what I'm saying? And then mm. he just grew over the years. Mm-hmm. Just even his mindset of, I don't really want to, I tried to go to a label. They ain't respect my hustle. Mm -hmm. They didn't respect what I brought to Fuck the Fuck the middleman. Fuck the middleman. Okay, I'm going to put my shit out independent. I may only put out 10,000 copies, but I'm going to charge $100 a copy. I'm going to yeah. make $100,000 in two days. Mm -hmm. Where it take motherfuckers to make a hundred thousand dollars. Some motherfuckers don't make a hundred thousand a year. Some motherfuckers gotta work three years to make a hundred thousand. And Jay Z bought ten thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars worth of copies from me. Right. So at the end of the day, it's like, man, Nip, you gone, but you never be forgotten, never. bro. As long as I'm on planet Earth, I'm gonna always never. hold you down, man. And we want to send our deepest condolences to his beautiful wife his kids, you know what I'm saying, his mother, his father, his brothers, mm -hmm. who I met personally, you know what I'm saying, and, and all the people in his family and all the, all the people who, you know, they might not be family because of blood, but you family because of love, you know what I'm saying, and if you felt the same pain that I felt, man, my condolences go out to you as well, you know what I'm saying, because this is somebody that I met before he got on. Me and him was friends before he had any type of money. When he just had a dream, me and him was friends. And I always used to tell him, no, you're going to get it, bro. You just got to keep hustling, man. You know what I'm saying? And and he got it. And one thing I could say about Nipsey Hussle, man, is the nigga that he was when he didn't have no money was the same nigga that he was when his bank account was leased. So I commend you for that, man. Rest in peace and nip, man. Shout out to All Money In. Shout out to everybody over there at Crenshaw, man. Shout out to his family, man. You'll never die out here. The marathon continues. It definitely, it definitely continues, man. But uh, I want to get straight into, you know, before we go any further, right, I want to get straight into something that's uh, very important to me. Mona can understand it too. Uh, coronavirus in prison. Uh, I, you know, I got some news from some brothers that talked to some brothers in the penitentiary, man. I was on a call last night on live. My brother, Dewan, man. And uh, the brothers, 
they in there, they going through it. You know what I mean? People is really, because just like the world don't know how to respond, correctional officers and, you know, the staff at the prisons, they don't know how to respond. Or nobody knows what's really going on. You're hearing this information, hearing that. They're saying a lot of brothers, and they ain't even got the proper stuff to clean. They sanitize their cells with, sanitize the block with. You know, uh, they letting them out a certain mm-hmm. amount of time just to go take a shower, like four people at a time. Mm-hmm. And everybody in there scared, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, you in your cell most of the day, you just looking at the news, and you seeing everything come from the news. So brothers on the inside is real scared, man. The people on the inside that's incarcerated. And when I say brothers, I'm not talking about no color. I'm just talking about people that's going through a struggle. Mm-hmm. Uh, all colors. I mean, they just going through it, and they just they 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 scared to death. Of uh, you have somebody that's in the, incarcerated, try your best to reach out to them. They're not doing no visiting them, but try to communicate. Some states they got the technology, the tablets where they can they can email and all that stuff. But if you can reach out to your family, man, because I know I know I didn't been in jail when it's though they had lockdowns or the things pop up, you know, all types of things that pop up. Nothing nothing as big as this where the world stop. But we be in jail, we be scared to death. Because mm-hmm. you don't know. Like, damn, you know, what's what going to happen to you when they could just leave and leave you locked in that cell and you're done? You can't get out of that cell. They could just leave. They're going to take care of themselves first. And, like, I, you know, and it's simple things, man. You, It's so easy to catch it, like, in prison because even though you could be on the block, y'all could be cool, y'all could be locked in, the COs, the correctional officers, the people that work there, they still going home every day and coming back. Mm-hmm. So you don't, you just scared to death. Like, I know right now I will be scared to fuck to death if I was in prison, man. Cause you look. Well, well, I'm just saying, like, you know, shout out to all the people in prison, right? But to me, bitch, you look like you're scared to death now. The fuck you coming here with that alien suit on, bitch? I just told you I ain't got. Wallow's giving us nigga. hazmat. You nut ass. You know, I'm just saying. Hazmat. At the end of the day, at the end like, of the day, you. I don't know if you're a fucking a cop. Or you work for NASA. You got you got the cop glasses on, the cop gloves on, but you got the NASA fit on. You, you know, we what still mean? haven't dunked the glasses in water, so we don't know right. really what's up. I don't with know the you. what the fuck are you? you what the fuck are you? Uh, uh, the police and a scientist at the same time, nigga. You look like you belong in a lab, like you, the nigga that's trying to figure out the motherfucking solution to the coronavirus. Don't come around us like that. That's pretty well, fucking. Oh, might insulting. have the vaccine. You know I'm realizing that both of y'all two is snitching because if I was undercover, y'all snitching on me right now. But that's another story. Yeah, One yeah. thing I <laughs> want to say about the jails before we get out of here with the jails, people complaining. Quarantine on the street, quarantine in jail is in your room all day long. And that's the only safe precaution they could do for you because the jail might be clear, but it's people in and out the jail. Once the jail get it, how do you not get it in jail? So, like, seriously, pray for the people behind the wall. Send them a letter. A letter does a lot. Getting your name called that mail is everything. Like, it seems like nothing. It takes you two seconds to just throw a stamp on the envelope, send your people some mail, man, especially if you reaped all the benefits of what they did when they was out. Don't forget yeah. about your people in the jail, man. Did you used to get a lot of mail? Free to jails. I, my name was called every day. Oh, so let Shout me ask out you a to question. my squad. Well, let me ask you a question, because, see, the thing for a guy in jail is when he get that picture with some legs or she in them panties, that ass bent over, you know, Lo would tell you he going to go hit the ceiling, right, Lo? <laughs> Party. I'm putting I'm putting the sheet up. Right. So when you was in jail, did you want a nigga to send you sweats? You know? Sweat picks. Sweat picks, draw picks, you know. All the mail is all the mail is checked by so, guards so first. So Dude, do for that. sure. They see you in the drawers like, like send me a picture of you in your ethicas and get him ready first. Get him up there. No, would you send, listen, it got to be graphic, but not too graphic because it won't get in. Would you send Tootie some drawings if you get some, like, 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 if she was in the joint, would you send her some I'm pictures? Not, I'm not, no. Them I see Gilly naked fuck. with a rose in his mouth. No, you crazy as shit. Tupac in the tub with the chains for Tootie. You crazy as shit. The, she I deserves never, it. I, you know what? You went, like, get, you went, Tupac like, was my favorite rapper, but I started looking at him different when he did that shit. <laughs> yeah, like, yo, wow. It was different times, the 90s. On this side? Fuck no. No, I'm not. First of all, let me just Wala, tell you, you something. you might need to shoot like that. Let you look just, good like that. Let me just tell you something. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Never gonna get none of those type of joints out there, me. You ain't gonna never catch them joints. Me standing there. I don't. I don't. I don't slap my own dick. Woke him up. Tootie behind the, the wall can't a get bit. a pick. No, I'm. I'm gonna wow, go see. Gil. I'm gonna go. She gonna see me personally. Go ahead, grab that dick. It's right there in the left. Under pocket. the table. So you are gonna yeah. do but, a hand but, job under the table. But you want her. You want her to send you some. You want her to send you some some party shots when you and Jeff. No, you ain't got to send me no party shots, man. Listen, uh, you ladies you know I mean? getting sexy on the gram. I'm, I'm, like I'm a like I'm not even. I'm a, I'm trying to get in and get the fuck out, man. You feel what I'm saying? Now, if if I got 20 years, I probably don't even want no party shots anyway because I know you out there, you getting party shots. That all in is your face. ridiculous. 
That's ridiculous. All, all you ladies on the gram getting sexy, know your pictures are upstate. People are screenshotting right. you and sending your pictures no, upstate. I will say this. I will you are now you, video you fixing. You left pictures of your, your girls and everything with Listen, niggas going to take this. them nigga up this. there squeezing off you to your girl. Crazy, ah, ah, ah. Like, like I told you. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Nigga like having sex me. with your girl all no, of no, the... No, no. Ah, no, listen, let me explain something to you. When you upstate... Shout out to all the dudes that know the game, man. All the all the people, all the shout out to all the sisters out here that be taking screenshotting the pictures off Instagram for their brothers and cousins and sending them up there, sending them all, printing them up. That is everything because right. you fall in love with girls you don't you never met in your life. Right. And then when you come home and you see them, you be like, oh man, I had her when I was in jail. And that's another story. <laughs> right. I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, man, Hawthorne. One thing about Hawthorne, smelling good is important. You know what I'm saying? Hawthorne smell really good. Getting Hawthorne cologne is so easy. Listen, it's simple. But hold up, let me show you their package. But some of y'all that don't know, and I'm gonna wind up giving this to somebody, one of our fans. As you can see, this lovely packaging, right? Let me go to the cologne first, real quick. Show you how the cologne is. Look, top flight, come in the box. I'm giving one of our fans, one of our million dollars worth of game fans this. Look at it. Look at the box. Look at the box. Look at it. Look at that. Ooh. Look at the box. Mm. It smells good. Look, work and play. That's one thing. They got the two styles you get. Oh, the box, the design, oh you know so I mean? they got the style when you want to yeah. get some goddamn breezy. So, Hold so, on, it's the so play joints. And, and listen, <laughs> and look at the packaging. The packaging is anything, right? Look, the packaging is anything. You listen, you're cracking right open. It's nice. You're cracking right open. And they got the Ziploc where you can zip it back if that's what you want to do for your stuff. Look, the body lotion. You see that? The Hawthorne, the bottles is sleek. It's stylish. Everything that you would like. It come in this packaging. You get it like it ain't nothing. Look. All the different stuff. The deodorant. Crack this open real quick. Uh, you might need to spray some more now, Gil. Because you always come in here looking like you play rough house. Everything is sleek. So when it's on your dresser, you looking at it, or it's on your dresses, it looks that's smooth. That's deodorant? It look calm. Yeah, that's deodorant. That's the deodorant. I mean, I got all, you know, it look calm, it looks smooth, everything. You know what I mean? They got the body wash, got other Let things. Let me smell a cologne. Listen, Where the cologne? Right, right here, smell man. It, man. Listen, this cologne is all that. That's what you be smelling with on me. That's why you, when you're eating, you want to rest. I don't be smelling nothing. Outside. And I think, and I think, and I think, what are you talking about? That's what you be smelling Listen, on me. I ain't no, smelt nothing this on you. That's the best That's you did work. That's why you always grabbing on me like that. Listen, that's why you always grabbing on me like that. Don't spray it. Oh I mean, my! That's why. Don't listen, spray that's it. why you always grab it. Yeah, it smell good. Yeah, that's why he be wrestling with me all the time. But is that is story. that home or play? Listen, that's play. Okay. That's what he's gonna spray the play on me for? Cause we can play. You know what I mean? I ain't saying like that, but like you know what I mean. Pause. Oh I ain't saying it like goodness, that, but, that but, boy, when I, but when I'm saying spicy, what, spicy. We one thing play. about Hawthorne that I like: you go in there, you can take the test right as a quiz. They can talk about you know when you take the test, you just listen. Tell listen. Everything is about taking the test, and they'll tell you the type of smells you, you, you need. They got the face cleaners. They got the face lotions. The, and it's tailored to your skin type. You know what I mean? Your skin type of needs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you have a significant other? You know what I mean? What they think about your new scent and all that stuff. I'm telling you. At the end of the day, your significant other, you're going to ask them. Spray it on you. They're going to be like, oh, man, this shit smell good. Because mine's when I first sprayed it on me, they was like, oh, this sh that shit, listen, that shit smell good. I'm like, yeah, that Hawthorne is all that. All you had to do, listen. Totally free, risk free, right? Free shipping, free returns, man. You ain't got to worry about nothing. So you, you want to create right now? You want to spice up your whole situation? But what you, this is what you do? Or if you're a woman, you go order it for your man, or you go order it for yourself and don't tell her that you ordered it. So you just walk in, you take a shower. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I like to roll with nothing on. Take the shower and just be walking around like everything cool. Put that, put that play on. Or you could put the work on because you won't go to work. You know what I mean, after you play with it a little bit, but whatever that might be, you know what I'm saying? You put that on and you walk and go make a sandwich. She's gonna smell you. Her whole attitude gonna that change. Because it's gonna be like you, it's gonna be like you at the club though. and you walking by them, right? That shit smell good, man. It's gonna be like, but what I'm gonna get it at, man. Listen, you go to Hawthorne.company, C O. Hawthorne, H A W T H O R N E dot C O. Listen, now, listen. All you got to do is go there, use the code game, get 10% off your first purchase. Listen, hawthorne.co, use the code game, and you're going to be smelling good just like I smell. All right, let's get into this. Well, all right. Top five comedians of all time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Number whoa. one is Eddie Murphy. Number one is definitely not Eddie Murphy. Number one comedian of all time is Eddie Murphy. Richard Pryor would be number one. Fuck no. Damn, Boom, that is good. That is good. That, is good. that is good. That is good. Fuck no. All right, but listen, how about this? I love one? Richard Pryor. Rest in peace to that legend. But Richard Pryor was not at All right, Murphy. but fuck that. What's your top five, Mona? Give your top five first. Top five. Can you five. give yours and mine? Um, no, no order. Richard Pryor, David Chappelle, Martin Lawrence, Some bullshit. Marlon Wayans. Bullshit. 
Marlon Wayne, fourth. Chris Rock. Bullshit. Chris Rock. Oh, that, that's our list. Now give me your list. Bullshit. Eddie Murphy. Martin Lawrence. Copycat. Richard Pryor. Will Farrell. <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay. Fuck. What? No. Jerry Seinfeld. Wallow. Well, Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld is that nigga though. I can't lie. Come though. on, stop. But not no, not he ain't in my top five. No, you look like an Andrew I grew Dice up. Playboy. I grew up in North Philly, so he probably, you know, if I grew up in motherfucking uh, Wisconsin, yeah, he probably would be. Jerry probably would be, but the fact I grew up in North Philly Something and I grew up off of, you know, deaf comedy jam. What, what's, what's my yes. man? What's, what's my man? Was on the Wayne um, Brothers show? Well, on Living Colors, white guy, Jim Carrey. No. You don't like Jim? I love Jim. You love Jim? I, I love Jim. Well, it's Jim. hard to do the list because you have I, to figure we doing stand-up or we doing Jim. total no, totality doing career. But don't we all them everything. dudes do stand-up that y'all just said? Hold yeah. on. Hold on. Hold on. I got Eddie Murphy. I got Martin Lawrence, right? And the reason why I picked these people one and two is because they got killer stand-up. And they both got movies where they play multiple motherfuckers in the movie coming to america eddie murphy was 44 motherfuckers Nutty in the movie richie pryor did yeah. it first what do you do richard pryor was the first to do the fucking nutty professor thing with with all the characters richie pryor played his the grandpa the dad the mom the girlfriend Where? don't what know the movie? name of the movie she don't even but know it happened. Movie. I, I don't remember that so that uh, anybody else remember that That actually happened when, when no, seriously. What the fuck did Richard that Richard Pryor happen? did that first. Uh, I, I never seen that When movie. I fucking figure out the movie, then that's it. Let me tell you something. Well, listen to it. Let me tell you something. Right now, you know what it seems like you're coming? You you just showed up to the court with no fucking basketball. You can't fucking play. I didn't how have my receipt. To, how you coming to the, oh, he did this. Chris, did Google that, it. And ain't got no motherfucking facts. Chris ain't on this motherfucking show. Chris, you ain't got the Google shit. I have to you switch You in the background up. over there, Chris. Stay the fucking. Right, I made a up. bad mistake. I have to take off the Wayans guy and put Bernie Mac on. Excuse okay. me. I apologize. Bernie, Bernie Mac is Mac. on my list. Martin Lawrence got movies like that where he played multiple motherfuckers Which ones? in the movie. Uh, Big, Big Mama. Mama. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, nigga, fuck. Stop fucking Shanae, man. Right, Shanae. He got all these Jerome's articles in going the house. Rome in the house. And his characters uh, are legendary. Rome Rome. His nigga's doing his characters uh, on the gram right now. We're not going to do that, Rome though. Rome. Huh, fuck is you talking about who? Right? Shanae. It ain't none of them other people did that. I know a lot of you women that look like Shanae. You got to understand, Eddie Murphy was six niggas in a barbershop. For sure. He he whipped Joe Lewis's head. I'm gonna tell you fuck what you say. Hey, Joe, hey, man, what? I'm hey. not a fan of his stand up. So at the end of shit. I don't like raw. I said it. Delirious. I don't care. Unpopular opinion. I don't like raw delirious. or delirious. Nope. Don't like uh, it. You're fucking on cocaine. I'm okay, sorry. Cool. I gotta true. get my five. All right. What's your five? Oh my god. My five Are number we ready? one. Number one. And I and, and the reason I'm going with him is personal. Kevin Hart. Because I know where he come from. Listen, he got big time fucking movies. Here he he do stand up and he was going through all type of shit. Kevin Hart. Nigga. Nigga. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Oh, 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 I'm putting him that's on my, my nigga. We Eerie from Erie. We Eerie both Eerie from Erie. Yeah, that's my fucking nigga. Shout out to Erie. Listen, he's I'm not number, number one. Bro. I'm putting him on my number one. Fuck your number one. I'm talking Kevin Hart's your number one. How you gonna tell me that's like me telling you number one? Kevin Hart is your number one. I said mine. Number one, bro. All time. Listen, I'm not Kevin Hart. Kevin, I give you Kevin being in your top five. Number one, dog. That is the ultimate. You just like you just like. How you going to shit on Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy? I'm not shitting on them. And, I, didn't, I, wouldn't and, do, I wouldn't dare do that. And what Martin I'm saying Lawrence is like that. Listen, cuz, what I'm saying is this. Let me talk. What I'm saying Kev is, is my nigga. We <laughs> grew up in the <laughs> same hood. I ain't worrying about that. Shout I, out worry, listen, listen, I cause, love Kev. Cuz, listen. It's no listen. nigga that's more proud of Kev than me. All right, well. Him and Kev used to split P and J's. You's a nut ass nigga. They ain't got nothing True. to do with you. All right, Kev, right? Kev, Richard. Kev, stop, Richard. No, no, say no niggas, shut up. Say shut niggas up. Whole name. Stop saying them niggas like you know I'm rich. No, I know them niggas. They, they's my fucking <laughs> uncles, nigga. When you in the crib and you going Kev, through the struggle in the Eddie Richard. in the eighties, fuck is you, you talking sound like about? A chick. Y'all don't know not the Kev. movie. You not sound Kev. like a chick name. I don't even know the movie. Y'all are not Richard Pryor fans if you don't know that movie. You sound like a chick name and all the niggas she fucked in high school. Let me get my shit out. Let me get my shit out. I let you get your shit out. Let me get my shit out. Kev, Richard, Eddie, Red Fox. Okay. Okay. The one and only David Chappelle. 
All my right. motherfucking nigga. His list is this is cool. Top flight list. Both of y'all it's niggas' cool. list is top flight full list of shit. Now I mean, cool. put your list down there. You looking at this? Tell me your five. But my five is legendary. Crush yeah, all your shit. Your five ain't fucking with my five. Crush all these. Now what's yeah. name? Will Ferrell is a fucking bit. He yeah. is. Will he Ferrell's is a hilarious. Nut. Yeah. So I like him. You know what I mean? But I thought you was gonna see somebody like Andrew th- Dice Clay. Why you ain't say Andrew Dice Clay? Cause that's your boy. Why are we mentioning Andrew Dice Clay? He's a guys? fucking legend too. Well, he okay. is a legend. Man. All right. He's a legend. You can't you can't not down this cause you don't like a nigga. You cannot downgrade the nigga's legend. Mm. Okay, so who the top five fuck it. Let, let, let who the top five honorable mentions? I would have to say Cedric the Entertainer for me. DL Hughley. Bernie Mac. D.L. Hughley, you are fucking right. What about Bill Bellamy? That nigga is funny on the stand up. No. No. Um, Not at all. What? Did you ever see him? He's funny. He's still working. Shout out to Bill Bellamy, but he's not on these lists. Nah. Um, I would have to give an up and coming young nigga some love. Shit, Bernie Maxio. Don't call me white girl. I like DC Young Fly. Oh. And I'm going to keep it all the way real. This nigga shocked the shit out of me. Ha ha Davis. Ha ha Davis. Ha ha Davis is funny as fuck. I'm going to keep it all the way real. Ha ha Davis is I funny as ha fuck. I thought ha ha Davis was a motherfucking Instagram nigga. Right. And it's a difference. That nigga did some stand up comedy. He's funny. In fucking Houston at Trade the Truth shit. That nigga did his thing, man. Ha ha Davis had I the whole lie. country now, saying words twice. I can't lie. The and whole country. What's the what's the little shorty? The girl. Just hilarious. Just hilarious. Just hilarious. She's doing her thing. All right now. I never seen you do no stand up, so I can't throw you on there. I ain't know you. You just trying to throw yourself in there, and I know you. So I see you trying to hop on the boat. Listen. And it's cool, no. but I ain't seen you do nothing. You know yet. what my issue is with that? Because when we talk about these comedians and we do honorable mentions, there's no kitty cat on the list. I mean, you said Jess Hilarious, that's what's up. Jess. But when you Be think about own. when you think about female comedy, I'm talking about when we talk about our favorites, legends, who do you who do you really mention? So where, where where's the Samores or the Moniques? Yeah, you're right. Or you're the right Wanda Sykes. Where are they? But that's why, okay, why the I'm fuck here. You ain't put up in there then. Because honestly, I don't have a favorite really female oh, comedian. Like, honestly, I mean, I wasn't like fucking no, with niggas. I like that's what you're saying. <laughs> no, you you can't be. Oh, I want to stick up for the bitches. Yeah, nobody don't throw the bitches in there. I'm Wait, not. You just had a top five. You didn't throw no bitches in there. I'm not sticking up for the women. Wasn't than I'm the saying niggas. there's well, a lack the there. Same uh, fucking way we felt. You know what I mean? I'm saying that we need more raw comedians <laughs> like myself. I feel like well, let's you compare me to somebody. Tell me a joke right now. Fuck that. We put you on the front street. You, tell me a joke right now. That is totally not how that works. But shit, I could. Uh, listen, I'm not a comedian, and I could tell you a motherfucking joke. Go. I hate when people Go. do that. Stop doing that in the street. Knock, knock. knock, knock. Who's there? Wallow in his dumb ass suit. Ba da bop. That was good. Thanks. You Colorful. Said, nah, they ain't getting me. I am Say the that. female version of Richard nah, Pryor, nah. and I'm the next hey, biggest hey, comedian y'all ever. Hear the joke, but y'all want to roll with right, it. Okay, nah, right. nah. Who there? Who's there? Colorful. Colorful, Colorful who? Colorful ass sweatsuit <laughs> Demona got on. <laughs> that was bullshit. <laughs> That was He's bullshit. corny. <laughs> but she laughed. Collage, though. But listen, you see how you fell back yeah. and you let. La- all I needed was that moment. Yeah, it was a pity laugh. This it was cool. a pity laugh. Like, I want to give them something. <laughs> all right, everybody I mean? give up. Before we even go to the next, everybody give up two people that's just funny on the gram. You ain't got to be a stand up. Who's funny on the gram? Boosie. Come on, dog. Talking, like, the nigga's trying gonna to be funny. Come on. What are you going to take from the Come comedian? on, Gil. Okay, let me just say something. Don't be a, don't be a dickhead. Let me just say something. He's to a me, rapper. To me, to me, some of the niggas that got the best personalities on Instagram ain't fucking comedians. Let's mm. be for real. A nigga, I didn't say best personalities, you nut ass. I didn't say that. I just said funny people. The funny people that's trying to be funny. Okay. Oh, that's okay. the thing. Please funny, give me two. Being funny is part of your personality. Right? All right. Give me two people. Just give me two. You ain't got to argue with me. Just give me two, two, two you, comedians. You want, you want me to tell you two Instagram funny comedians to that you funny that you laugh at? Two Instagram comedians. Ha ha, Davis and DC Young Fly. All right. All right. I like you know who you know who I think funny as shit. And Boosie, Spice Adams, Spice Adams. He's a funny motherfucker. And. Shiggy be on there tripping when he be doing the old head skits. He be tripping. But I want to shout out to Philly. Uh, 
some Philly boys too. Uh, Rich Dollars, a uh, Gee Funny, Funny Boy Quill, Tiz Money. You know what I mean? It's a couple of Tiz Yeah, Southside Jew makes me laugh. Southside Jew's funny. Southside Jew. Hey, but you know what I mean? Shout out to them that's doing anything. Right. But now, let's go to the next segment, man. Let's Excuse me, my two oh, my Instagram former. comedians that are funny. I would give it to Southside Jew and Katie the Don. Katie the Don. Katie the Don is funny. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check. check her out. Katie the Don is Southside Jew. Everybody that's doing anything. You know what I mean? Shout out to everybody that's doing these things. Let me say something about that. It's a difference between Instagram comedians and real comedians. We know that. Stand up and Instagram. It's a difference. That's That's what what separates the boys from the men. The stage. I said said Instagram, Mona. All right. Million dollars worth of game. Let's get into this. Oh, million dollars worth worth of game is brought to you by Tommy John. Right now, if you're in the house, you're going to be there for a little while. You need to be comfortable. Like Tommy John is like, it's like having nothing on. I'm one of them free spirited people that's like to wear my <laughs> birthday suit. So when I got Tommy John's, when I feel great, I feel good. I just feel wonderful. At the end of the day, you need to get you some Tommy John's. Listen, and, and I always keep a fresh one on deck because just in case. But 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 look, as you can see, these these are the colorful the colorful edition, right? One thing I like about these colorful Tommy John's right here, you see these? They feel good. Look, they feel good. You got the little pocket right here. You can use the bathroom with that right here, Mona. Could you please fill these and tell me would you want your man to have them on? How how do you feel the fat? Fill up, fill the yes, fat. Yes, they're very soft. You see what I'm saying? They're very soft. They're real good. Uh, Gil got a couple pair uh, that he got uh, in a little I, pocket. I, I gave him some pair from Valentine's Day. He loved them. He said, "Man, these is wonderful." And I said, "Why is oh, you telling me that?" Me for that no, thing. when you told me that in the car, I was like, "Yo, that was a little off." You did say, "Yo, these joints." I'm like, "Oh, what the fuck?" And then you pulled yeah. your pants up to like oh, show me that. Fill them other man's listen, 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 here, here, give them listen, it don't matter. He trying to front. He trying to. Shut up. Put the drawers. Wipe your, wipe your drawers to your face. I'll handle all yeah. the pauses this episode. <laughs> wipe the drawers in his face. But listen, at the end of the, the day, man, you doing, Tommy bro? John's, man. The drawers you go, could have Rona on it. No, they ain't got no Rona on it. They fresh out the pack. One thing about Tommy John's. No, they ain't got Rona on it. They got a fucking a Rona on a Rome on it. No, 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 no. They fresh out the pack. You're fucking skid streak off. Listen, I just had them fresh out the pack. <laughs> you know? But one thing about it, listen, at the end of the day, hurry up to Tommy John. Listen, TommyJohn.com slash million. Tommy Don, not with an S, just million. I'm talking about go there, get your Tommy Johns right now, get, get your underclothes, you know what I mean? Get everything, get 20% off, you know what I mean? Tommy Johns, when you use backslash million, check them out. Tommy Johns, million dollars worth of game. Hey, listen, this million dollars worth of game, right? I figured that I would just talk about the importance of social, distancing, social distancing, washing your hands. Please. How and, you talking about social distancing when you just touch me? And and but because you slapped me in the face with some fucking draws, nigga. That, yeah, you right. I don't give a fuck about social distance. You put Pause. some fucking draws in my face. But what I'm saying is the importance of just taking this coronavirus thing serious. Please. You know what Please. I'm saying? Just taking it serious and now because you got young motherfuckers like my son who I was in the house arguing with. Everybody ain't staying in. It's people going outside. Uh, y'all went outside. Nigga, we went to the supermarket. So, you know, it's, it's motherfuckers out here that, you know, they think that this shit is a game. And if it wasn't for us having to do this podcast and deliver this good game to y'all, I would not be sitting next to these two motherfuckers. That's just the truth. Seriously. And one thing that's important, when you go to the supermarket, please don't take fucking everything. I see, listen, man, I seen an old lady in the supermarket looking for something, man. And she like, she was just like, she in the aisle, I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying to myself? That could be my grandma, that could be some. And it's like, no, she don't probably got no help. So imagine when your grandma or somebody that you, you could be anywhere, you ain't got to be there. She going to get some food or whatever. If she ain't got no older lady, they ain't got nobody. And she go there. Now she got to try to go to another store. So now that's more travel for it. That's more wear and tear on her body. Right. And also, you got to be. And, and, and if you see somebody at the register, like and you, you're a young person, man. You see an older person. They look like you help them out. Help, help them out the best way you can. If you can't even pay for the shit. You know, if I do that can. all the time. Yeah. But just help them. But, but think about when you grabbing stuff. You don't. Listen. 15, the store's gonna keep stocking up. The trucks is running. They're gonna keep stocking up. But think about somebody that's coming after you. And what's the Damn. thing with the toilet paper? How many how many times you gonna wipe your ass? Why is it no toilet paper? What, what, why, why? Why are y'all taking all the because toilet I'm paper? Keep it all the way real, though. It's a fucked up thing. When 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 you run out of toilet paper, you take that shit. <laughs> and then you look up, ain't no toilet paper. Because I'm gonna keep it for a couple times. I had to wipe my ass with a t shirt. Wow. <laughs> Like, you ain't wow. never had to wipe your ass with a t-shirt? I did before in the woods. I'm outdoors, man. It's it some really shit I'm just Come not going to say on here. I'm just, I, I, I have to listen, just take that stance. First of all, you look up, ain't no toilet paper. Okay, bring me some paper towel. 
Ain't no paper towel. Paper towel is rough though. It'll rip your keys. It don't even matter. Poor it's people use thing. newspaper. Oh. So, oh man, that's the rough. No, 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 no. I wasn't using. I use it. Oh, I use it. Did you grow t-shirt. up poor? I, I I use a T-shirt. I use newspaper before. Before I use it, fucking. But I newspaper. used to wet it though. I wouldn't just use it. out. Ginger. In the sink. Pa-pa-pa. That's another conversation wet it, for another day. So at the end of the day, I understand why it ain't no more toilet paper because it's either toilet paper or paper towel. And then you run out of that. It's a T-shirt. Listen, practice social you distancing. Wipe your ass. You never ran out of toilet paper and paper towel. I have never wiped my ass with a T-shirt, Gil. What you wiped your ass with then? Look at you, you're trying to think of You don't ask a woman no shit like that. Use yeah. my panties. You said panties, sorry. I cool. use my panties. Same thing. I throw them away. A, I use a little ass thong to wipe your ass. I got a lot of ass. I don't have so, little ass thongs. So you got, so you got, you had shit all on your fingers and everything. It got rough, but I made it through. Damn. Listen, social distancing is important, and you think that fucking quarantining for 30 days sucks. I imagine 90 days. The more we go out, the longer this shit is going to take. These people are figuring this shit out day by day. And if you do decide to do some dumb shit like get an air b and have a party don't post it because you're encouraging your dumbass follower to have another party stop having parties people are social distancing meaning i'm gonna just hang with my cousins or my gang or my friends no stay the fuck in the house until we figure this shit out it's that simple like and about the old people if you know somebody on your block i challenge everybody watching this to just knock on the door yell from the yard do you need anything and if she says fuck off say fuck you too miss barbara I got one question. I, I just want to ask this because I I was going to ask you this off camera but just because he, he came on my. Did 6 9 call you since he got out of jail? Has he reached out? Oh, you playing? No, I'm, the only reason, <laughs> only thing I'm saying, Mona, every time he came to jail, he was he was, uh, he was was hooking up with Gilly. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying okay, to. So, so, is we, that third? so you mean Conan and motherfucking uh, the queen of the mile got jokes in this? No, I'm up. not saying. I'm just 6 asking, 9 was released because of the coronavirus. Did he call you? Like when I, when I got to jail, I called you, you my peoples. I'm just saying that. I'm asking you, did he call you? All right. I'm going to set up the I'm gonna set up the, the king of nut ass nigga tour and the fucking <laughs> queen of the mile tour. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Right. Honestly, what rapper y'all think would do a song with him first? Gil. What rapper I think would do a song with him yeah, first? Yeah, somebody's going to do it. Now, no, who is it going to be? All that. We ain't got to get in all I'll that. I'll tell you what rapper do a song with him first. We ain't got to get in all that. Whatever rapper's the thirstiest for the fame. Okay. Somebody's going to do it. But I'm Welcome home, Takashi. At the end of the day. Look at you. At the, at the end of the day. Listen, man. I'm One thing I'm not going to do, I ain't going to sit in, in harbor on Youngin too much because... It's a gang of motherfucking rats right here in the city of Philadelphia. Facts. It's a gang of niggas that I know personally who, so it's like. And y'all hang and with them. these em. niggas be, who? I'm talking to the people. Oh. Y'all take pictures with them. Oh. Uh, so at the end of the day, it's like, I don't, listen, man, I just, I just do me, man. I mind my business. I, I, you know, I stay to me and mine's and I, I let niggas do them. You what happened? I mean? What happened that day the police ain't? And catch you and they caught me. I mean, they, uh, they they caught you, put you in the car, and the next thing you know, they, they had me locked up. What happened that day? Wow. What? Get the fuck out. <laughs> Let's, go. Let's go to the next topic. I don't want to put nobody out there. Wowzer. And I just look up, I was in jail forever. I don't know Get what happened. Get the fuck out of here. They said we got some topics. You was in jail forever because you're slow. I don't know what happened. That's yeah, I mean, the last thing I heard was, cuz, wait up. I'm, wait said. up. No, he said they got us. Come out. Oh, I, said, about, I came he, out. He, he was going. Cuz, wait up. Y'all know I was the athlete. Y'all, this nigga, they tripped him off from behind. He fell, scraped his chin all on the ground. Shit. Yo, he off. really be having people. He, he was an athlete. You played for online college before online was popping. I'm still an athlete. <laughs> Fuck out of here, you nut. I played on online college. How you going to play for, listen, how you going to play for a college called Philadelphia College University <laughs> Community of North Philly by way of Airy Ave? <laughs> Street and, and you went to and, you, and then and then your major was streetology. Play How the fuck what? was your major streetology? All right, football. First of all, first of all okay, first of track. all, track. I give you track. All, first of all, let's keep it real. You was the three time prison champion in the dance contest, bitch. Was you? Yes. Can you? He dance? was battling. He was battling a nigga named Lil Him in the yard, not Lil Kim. Low him. Free low him. Yeah, he was battling low him in the yard, <laughs> right? Low him had him, right? Then he threw his motherfucking leg. This was for the third championship, the three peat like George. Yeah. Okay. I mean? Nigga threw his leg up on the motherfucking uh on the weight bench. Pause. Do the stinky leg. Oh, the whole yard went crazy. Shut that shit down. Three he lying times on me. I would have thrown ping pong for you, Wallow. 
I played a little ping pong. You look ping pong. They had it in, you on give the cell me ping block. pong. Oh, first of all, let me just tell you something because you new to the show, right? He was the captain of the wrestling team, right? You Pumps. lying on me, man. He was a pimp. He lying on me. A pimp with holes? Yes, he pimped two holes in jail. I've R- always wanted to be a madam. He was. A, he had Ricky Minaj. You was a pimp in prison? Yes, he, he had he Ricky he Minaj. He lied. And he had. Um, he lying on me. This shit getting gayer and gayer. Like, I'm just saying. Yeah, Beyonce like and Ricky Minaj. You look like a CO. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a rat, nigga. <laughs> you look like you take a whole cartel down route right now, nigga. And I'm gonna keep it. You look like Officer John. In Tapper. life, in life, when you see me, what did this nigga play? What athlete? What? What? Where's the athleticism? Football, track, what? Who me? Yes, well, I did it all. That nigga okay. was a track. He used to I run did from niggas all. in school. That's how they found <laughs> he was a track. Because the coach was leaving one day. The track coach was leaving. And they see him running down Broad Street. They say, oh, him and he's going to he's the Olympics. Fast. So, so yeah. that's how he came to star. He was the best in Philly. But listen, in, in, he, he won the street Olympics and he won the high school Olympics for track. But I will say this. Uh, at the end of the day, when you see me, right? Yes. Just was, think about this. That was a good one, And I bitch. think this is why he mad. Let me take my hood off real quick. When you see me, Mona. What vibes do you get from me, like as a, as a, you know, professions in life? You, you give me State Trooper. Yeah, you give me Officer Jonathan. Give Tackle. me State Trooper first year out, right? Ready to make a fucking Name message. For himself, right? Yeah, you, like you, you me, I'm you out here me, to lock you give motherfuckers me a state trooper up. F- fresh out the academy, trying to make a name for himself, Officer Jonathan. You Tackle. give me arrest the older lady for a traffic ticket, right? You think I would? Do you give me. You give me. Give me some other. You give me. You, you give me. You give me pat a nigga down, grab his dick, and then scream out, we got a weapon. That's what you give me. You give me loss prevention at Target. Right. You give me a, a, a low-budget security gig at a, at, a, at a Tasty Cake factory. You give me security guarding a toilet paper at right. Target. Right. You give me the nut-ass CO on D-Block up greatest for it. Yeah. You give me. You know the nut-ass CO that give everybody a problem? Because I'm a CO or a sergeant. No, you a get, fucking you give, CL. You for give sure. me Sergeant Dickhead. No white shirt. Yeah, no. you give me Sergeant DH. Yeah. You cool. give me visiting guard dickhead that don't let Gilly get the hand job under the table. Damn, he give you that. Nut That's ass the nigga. worst nigga in the jail. Right. Like, come on, bro. It's a you visit. Get, you give me CO who on all your off days you go to Lou and Choose and party. You give me, I'm out from doing all that time and I'm gonna get somebody locked up. Dip the glasses. Can we get the glasses <laughs> dipped? <laughs> Dip the glasses. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, we gonna stop telling you what you give us. No, but I'm yeah. saying, what type of real life, like, like top flight job, like a real job, like y'all think if I was working in a real public, like a, a you give me, you give me a, you give me a twenty year waiting on your pension to come fireman. Yeah, you give me like dickhead at the for parking the, you, lot. Where you love for the for that? Oh, get the hoses! You run up on the truck. You give me that's one a, of those niggas. That's a hero job. Yeah. Any other hero jobs like you? Like the dickhead at the concert that makes you put your phone away. Yeah, you give me that too. That's still security. For no yeah, reason. Yeah, like yeah, as, yeah. as I'm hype with it, I'm just, excuse me, you got to put your phone away. You give me, it's just my job. It's, I'm just doing my job. I'm just, right. Oh, I'm just doing my job. Yeah. Then it, okay, yeah. okay, that ain't yeah. bad. Yeah, that's the yeah. drink you give me. Follow the rules. Ain't a bad, rules. Yeah. Ain't a bad gig. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just honest. Listen, man. A lot of youngins be in my DM, right? And a question that they always ask that I never really even spoke on, never, you know, was Gilly, how do you win coming from the hood? Oh, whoa, whoa, can I handle that? Let, let me handle this. My type of shit. My type of shit. Let me look in the you camera. Just in that condo. Keep my glasses on so you can see me when I see you. How do you win coming out the hood? He's wearing a wire. Young cats. I'm talking to the young cats. I'm not talking to the older dudes that's stuck in their ways, caught up on some back in the day shit that don't matter no more. Nobody cares about yesterday. But if you're a young cat, let me just tell you something that's real important. You're trying to come up out of the hood. You gotta have you. You gotta know how to deal with people the same way you deal with people sliding DMs and all that on social media. You gotta know how to deal with people in real life. You gotta establish relationships with people that can help you and introduce you to new levels of life. But two things you can't do. You cannot monetize tough. Mm. You can't monetize tough. And what you oh, mean by that? Yeah, oh, I'm mean? a tough nigga. I'm a street. I'm tough. Nobody gives a fuck that you're tough. Nobody cares. You, you're not making no millions off of being tough unless you're in a movie. Number two, you can't monetize cool. And when I say cool, cool is I'm not doing this. I don't want to do that. I ain't doing this. It's cool. It's cool. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. That's the tough. That's the cool joint. The cool joint. Oh, I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. Like, you know how many cool motherfuckers I know that's broke? 
Oh, I'm too cool to get a job. Oh, I'm too cool to get this. I'm mm-hmm. too cool to get that. A lot of people out there that's chasing their dreams, and I tell people this all the time. You could be chasing your dreams at the same time, have a job to maintain your bills and, and your responsibilities. Sure. Why are you chasing your dream? Right. Don't be too cool when you tell me something. Oh, I just rap. Or, oh, I just, I just. You got motherfucker told me the other day. Oh, I'm just a street nigga, man. I don't do nothing. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is you talking about? You don't get no money. You live with chicks. Like, you don't get no money. I got a cat that told me he's a street dude. No, I'm street. You know how I play. I'm rocking it all the way out. Well, you're not successful at doing it, buddy. You're, being a, sh- you're a loser street dude. You haven't won yet. You're not a right. successful criminal. Right. So at the end of the day, you too cool to get a job. You too cool to try to go after something. But you, you ain't too cool to lay up in somebody's crib and eat all the food up. Eat all the boo-boo and little Raheem juicy juices. Eat all these little snacks, the little apple, the little, the little slices, the little sandwiches, mm-hmm. little, little surprises they be having. You, you want to eat all that shit. Mm-hmm. And fuck somebody's couch up, cause mm-hmm. you laying up on the couch putting the dinner, in, and dent you wearing the got you wearing the, the goddamn game out, and you wearing the goddamn refrigerator out. The refrigerator door ready fly the fuck off, but you talking about you too cool. Mm-hmm. Think about that. To all you dudes is cool, but back to the young boys, youngins, watch who the fuck you call your old head, man. Mm-hmm. For sure. Look at your old head and, and do and do and do a fact check. And be like, hold up, my old head. How long you been in the streets? Right. You been in the streets just since I was before I was born, and you still broke. You still ain't come up. You still ain't win. But why is it that young boy? Look at all the older men in your neighborhood. And then you see the dude that been working, whatever. He, his house paid for. He got a nice house, his nice car. Y'all front washing his car. His children going to college and all that. Then look at your old head. Where's kids at? What they doing? Mm-hmm. And if they is, they got they doing some other shit. They away from him. Look mm-hmm. at them. So watch who the fuck you call your old head. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. And and what you did in some street shit ain't got nothing to do with no old head. Because a lot of people put that that OG John with somebody that was in the street. Right. Like OG's a bad shit. OG mean offering game. Right. So it could be somebody that drive the scepter bus. That could exactly. be your OG. Mm-hmm. It ain't got to be nothing to do with some some tough shit. Everybody is so focused on a OG as a real, some dude that did some fucking crime or some goofy shit nah. that's ready of a, a PD, really a penitentiary director. Mm. Don't, don't, don't Make sure your OG ain't a PD, a penitentiary director, giving you game to direct your dumb ass to the motherfucking penitentiary. I love talking some shit. So at the end of the day, mm-hmm. the way you win is grind. Don't be entitled. Don't nobody owe you shit. Yes. Repeat. Grind. Don't be entitled. Don't nobody owe you shit. And you're going to get to the places that you want to be. But why are you doing it? If you got to get a gig or whatever, to maintain your responsibilities, do that. <coughs> but that's how you come up out of the. That's how you win coming up out the hood, man. I mean, that's how I feel Put about that shit. Put out good energy. Go ahead. How do you win coming up out the hood? Number one. I don't give a fuck if you're coming out the hoods, you're coming out the suburbs, you're coming from from Mars, Jupiter. I don't give a fuck where you're coming from. The secret to winning in life is hard work. You feel what I'm saying? And understanding what hard work really is. See, motherfuckers, some motherfuckers you got out here, they fooling themselves. They think they putting in hard work. Sometimes you got to sit around a motherfucker that, that work hard. To, bitch, you just call. <coughs> Coughing nowadays is hard as a motherfucker. Yeah, motherfucker it's the water. It's the water. It's the water. It trickles. that way, though. Where the hands in? You know what I'm saying? Hard work. You got to put the work in, man. And then when you coming from the hood, you got to stay out the way. Explain. Elaborate on stay out the so, way. So, so, so. When you're putting the work in and you got to stay out the way, you got to understand that, okay, what do I want out of life? Do I want to be out here hustling? Do I want to be out here uh, uh, shooting at niggas? Do I want to be out here doing all the typical shit that these young niggas do growing up in the hood? Or do I want to be great? No, I want to be great. So you know what? What y'all do is not what I do. And just because I don't do that, that don't make me less of a man. That don't make me a bitch ass nigga. That don't make me uh, none of the none of that bullshit. You feel what I'm saying? It really make you more of a man to know who you is and know where you trying to go at in life. Facts. See, because you got you have a group of niggas, and only one of them is really true to this gangster shit. Right. All the rest of them niggas is being followers. Mm -hmm. They ain't being true to who they really is. So at the end of the day, you knowing who you really is, putting the hard work in, staying the fuck out the way, and understanding that your blessings come from God. 
So once you put enough work in, there you go. It's coming. You deserve it. You deserve it. Yeah. You deserve it. Your blessings don't come from nowhere else. Your blessings come from God. I told Wallow that when they first came home. You put the work in, you're truly blessed. That's some structure st- too. And you too. still put in the work in. Every fucking day. You didn't get some money and say, oh, I, I, I got some money. I'm at the finish line. No, it's like, right. oh, no, no, no. How we going to get some more money? How we going to take what we got now and amplify it times 10? Because the object of this shit was never to just get some money. Mm-mm. The object of this shit was to change the lives of motherfuckers that we ain't going to never get a chance to meet. Mm-hmm. Yes. The moves I make today going to secure the future of the family members that I won't be living to meet. That's right. That's the motto. You feel what I'm saying? We trying to secure the bag for motherfuckers we ain't even going to be able to meet. They just going to hear stories about it. Yeah, I'm telling you, boy, your great, great grandfather. That nigga was crazy. That nigga was crazy to the motherfucker. He, they, but he left this. But he left the bag. So at the end of the day, man, anybody, I don't give a fuck what situation you in, man. You can make it happen. You don't need a bunch of niggas to fuck with you. You just need a couple niggas to fuck with you. And you can make it happen. I don't give a fuck where you come from. So shout out to all the youngins, man, who sent me that, that them DMs. And, you know, they really be wanting to know. You know, they be really, they be wanting to the gain. They be really wanting to know, yo, is it possible? That's what they really be wanting to know. Is it possible for me to make it the fuck out? It is. It is. Especially and, uh, if you believe it. You have to believe it. You have to believe that you can. If you believe it, you see it, put that footwork in, it'll work. And add structure to your life. Start waking up in the morning. You're the only one in the house get up in the morning. Maybe other people wake up with you. Add structure or discipline because the jail will do it for you anyway. Yeah, and uh, on talking about jail, now it's time for stories from the cell. On this story from the cell, I'm talking about the first time I got chumped in jail by a white boy. Mm. What happened was, <laughs> no, I had to slide it in quick to get this shit over with. But it's real. <laughs> See, I'm in jail, right? I'm, this, this one, I was still young. I'm in Dallas Penitentiary, right? I go to the child hall. One thing about it, I was the child hall champion, right? This back when they used to give you rice and beans a lot of times of the week. They give you a bunch of rice on your joint. This one, they was in counting your porches. You know how motherfuckers to shake the dip on you in jail. Mm-hmm. This one, they were just hitting that joint. They were just, they were just like, they was hitting it like this. So they, I go to the joint, so I'm running down there. But when I ran down there, it was about 10 people in line because you know how when they hit the doors early, you, they hit your tear, you first to go. So you run, you, you know what I mean? I go down the joint, I run down the chow hall, right? So it's this white boy, he got a little size on it, but I ain't paying attention. So I just walk, walk through, because he go to the wall where everybody lined up, but I walk, walk from the wall, walk through a couple of the, the tables and walk in front. He walk right up. Yo, my man, what you doing? Right? I'll never forget, he was an Irish boy from Pittsburgh, right? I'm like, what you mean what I'm doing? He's like, what the fuck is you doing busting me? And I seen he was ready to get loud. And I, I knew I ain't want no smoke with this guy. He was, he was a big guy. Looked like he looked like he operate weights. So, 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 <laughs> so straight up, I'm so, gonna okay, tell you what Okay, okay, okay. So you so you saying a motherfucker could spook you off of the look. No, the fuck all that. Fuck what he talking about. I'm My asking you a line. question. A nigga could spook you off the look. Possibility. It depends on the situation. So let me explain right. what happened. So now when he said, right, the child hall wasn't crowded, but more people starting to come in. And I'm like, God damn, a rep on the line. So what I, the, the easiest thing to do was to push eject, right? Like a tape player, <laughs> push eject. So I said, uh, no, no, I ain't even, you know what? My bad, yeah, because you ain't going to be fucking busting nobody. I didn't want this dude to keep going on because he was going to blast me. And if we got in the fist of cups, it would have been a problem right there. Because I'm little, he's dude big as shit, big white boy, right? Mm. And he looked like he was just like in an Irish mob or some type of shit. Whatever he had going on in Pittsburgh, it was some serious shit. Because <laughs> I seen him on the yard a couple of times and people respected him. Mm. But I'm like, oh shit, right? So I'm like, no, my fault, man. I ain't mean to do it. He said, yeah, don't be fucking busting no lines So you was here. bitching at a rapid rate. I took my ass yes. right back to the back of the line because more people came. I went to back of them because I ain't wanted nobody. To, I ain't wanted to keep going. I wanted to die down real quick. Because if this scene would have been took and able to transcribe the scene, I would have had to fuck my jacket up. Beginning of the bit or end of the bit? That was at the beginning. Wow. At the, at the end, I knew not to jump the fucking line. In the beginning, you not wild and poking niggas? No, you don't be doing mm-hmm. all that. I'm trying to get out of jail. Everybody that talk that shit, like niggas don't really. Like, you know dudes, what I hate, though? Niggas that come home. You know what I hate niggas from, don't niggas, really do that. from niggas from jail? 
every nigga <laughs> that come home from jail scream out. I was running shit up there. Nobody running jail. I was the man up there. I'm telling you, I was running shit on him. It's like, nigga, you wasn't even running shit on the street. <laughs> How the fuck you was running shit in jail? I'm, I'm confused. Like, like, oh, you, cause you, cause you was the nigga who stuck some weed in your ass hole oh. to get it in the jail. Cause you was the poofer. You was running shit. Niggas is crazy. Like it. And it's another crazy. thing I hate. Why do niggas think? Because. They was doing some illegal shit on the streets. And all that happened was you got caught. You go to jail. You do a bunch of years. And then when you come home, you tougher than when you went in. Why do niggas feel like that? I would try to ask about that because when that white boy stepped in me, I was, tough wasn't even <laughs> on my mind. My whole thing was about, listen, we got to, it was like a motherfucker. When he stepped, when I seen what's going on, I was like, hold the fuck up. I got to figure out a way for us to try to negotiate something because this don't got to go nowhere. It don't have to go nowhere. Because if this, and, I, and I'm standing right next to the, to the, to the, to the gate. It was like a gate on a, on a window. And I'm like, if he just, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be Shout out to Tim McCormick, so wherever said, you are. Yeah, I said, hold on, let me slide the fuck up out of this. Because I wasn't that dude that was on it. I ain't the dude that went to jail and all of a sudden I became tough. I became realer than everybody in society. I'm, I'm thorough or tougher than anybody that never went to jail. I went to jail, did my time, got the fuck out, educated myself the best way, and went and lived my life. I wasn't mad at nobody. I wasn't angry at nobody. I wasn't trying to put, oh, I was in jail. I'm tougher than you. I put, and I let people know this. When dudes say, damn, man, you're a real nigga. You did 20 years in jail. I said, no, I'm a dickhead. The boy that never went to jail is the real nigga. Right. Don't never fuck that up, young boy. Don't never get me mixed up and think that I'm really than your pop. I'm really than your uncle. They got a real job that work for SEPTA or a transportation or a work at Walmart. Right. No, I'm no yeah. realer than them. I'm a human being just like them. And, and me doing some dickhead nigga. shit and getting caught don't mean nothing. Right. Stories from the cell. Why don't you give a story from the cell real quick? <sighs> One time about how Big Mama ate that pussy. Tell about <sighs> how Papa ate that pussy. What you call the Big Papa? Daddy. Shout daddy. out to my dad. I was thinking you was going to reach out because I talked to me, talked about you on the last episode. You haven't. Uh, hopefully you're alive and you're well, corona did. free. All right, let me ask you one question, though. Out of, out of, out of every, all right, just say 100 women in jail, how many of them get down? 98. Get the fuck out of here. Girl jail is super gay. I saw somebody get fisted in girl jail. That was pretty wild. Damn, they, they named it. Fisted, many, that's the fist. Uh, uh, how many fists could you get in yours? None. I mean, get fingers. Like. Fingers. Listen, I saw someone get like fisted. Dicks. And for sure, for sure, the women that are the gayest are the married ones. Like the husbands come every week and she come give you a kiss and she goes right back on the unit and she irons that bitch's clothes. Yeah, she's cheating on you with the woman that used to smoke crack. Wow. Why? 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 But listen. Because crackheads come to jail and they get all thick. You know what I mean? And they have to survive. So they turn into men and they get women to take care of them. So you sending money to the jail, but really it's going to Big Deborah. Like it was going to daddy? I didn't have to spend a dollar in my father's cell. He held us down. She keep talking about my father like Yo, this. He was fucked up. She fucked up. She why would I call her dad if she fucked me? If I Tootie had called sex me with dad, woman, I blazes the shit out of daddy. We have shit. to ask Tootie about all oh, that. Oh, oh, let me ask you a question. Did I'll you, make the call. Too. Speaking of the shitty medium dicks, please get out of my DM. I said I like medium dicks. I don't want yours. I don't. When I'm looking for a medium dick, I will put it on here. Get out of my DM with that. But listen, let me ask you a question, dick, though. sir. It's let, gross. Let me ask they you one question. A bunch of little Did I you, have huge amounts of dick pics, mediums. Anybody who wants that, I could forward them to you. They so people been sending me ashy dicks, greasy they found dicks. Out, they found out she like little, little stocky Hondas. They, I've even all got All the chubbers, action. all the chubbers in the stubbers sent her. Sent like, the stocky Hondas I over. swear, these men are so happy that I came out and said that. And they're all, my DM is flooded with schmedium dicks. Of I've even and got stubbers. action shots, cum shots. Right a in the chub, DM. Of chubbers and stubbers? Of chubby, I'm the man for you. That's how it starts. Chubbers and stubbers? Yes, I'm it. Can you I ask you love a question me. about daddy in jail? Did you ever? You show did you clean the cell? Chubbers and stubbers. Hold up, cuz. Did you clean the cell or make her bed? Somebody came and cleaned our cell for us. But I'm telling you, this bitch ran shit. She ran shit, and I was her daughter. Shout out to FDC. Free FDC. 
three north. Well, listen, man. We Floors close. waxed and all that. Close on that one. Breaks off that pussy. Listen, we appreciate y'all for tuning in each and every week. The million dollars worth of game. Thanks, guys. Listen, man. Um, make sure y'all go online. Get your merch. Barstoolsports.com. We got a bunch of t-shirts, hoodies, hats, etc. Million dollars worth of game presented by Barstool Sports. Right. Million dollars worth of game presented by Barstool Sports. New Amsterdam Vodka is the official vodka for Barstool Sports. Make sure y'all get in tune with some of that. And uh, we appreciate y'all for making us the number one music podcast in the country each and every week. I go by the name of Gilly the King. I'm Wallow267. Don't call me white girl. Thanks for all the love, everybody. Thank you. And it's just like that. Right!